thanks of those of you that God's been good to you. Amen, amen. He's a good God. I said he's a good God. Amen. The Bible teaches us that there is love good with God. I praise God tonight. Heaven is just glad to be in this service. Amen. Put your hands together. Let's give him a praise tonight. Let God feel God in the house. I feel it in this place tonight. Amen. Open your heart. And let God do with you. Amen. What he wants to do. Look at your neighbor right now. Say, neighbor, God has something for you in this place. Amen. Come on. Do you believe in tonight? Oh, God have mercy. Amen. I don't know sometimes. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violence got to take it by force. Amen. Sometimes you just got to take it. Somebody say amen. Sometimes you just got to tell the devil enough is enough. And then you all feel like you're sick of the devil. Amen. Come on. I said you're sick of it. You're tired of it. Somebody say amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Feel God's presence. Amen. There's down being spilled on the wall every night. Amen. God has been talking to us. And I thank God for it. Amen. That brother preached last night. Amen. Sister Brittany, he dealt with the home. Amen. And I'll tell you what. I don't know about y'all. But I've been saying, God, help me. Amen. Help me to turn back to you. Help me to get my house back in order. Somebody say amen. Oh, God, sometimes. Amen. The devil will come in. He'll get in your youngins. He'll get in your spouse. Somebody say amen. But you have to say, Jesus, enough is enough. I'm sick of that devil. I want my house back. Somebody say, God, give me my house back. I gotta have it. Oh, come on, somebody. Do you love the Lord tonight? Why don't you praise Him and say, God, I thank you. Somebody say that. Well, I feel this thing. Sister Brittany, will you come and sing for us tonight? Amen. Put your hands together as she comes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah.
And the Bible said that when Hezekiah heard the word, he turned his face to the wall. Oh, I don't think he just said some lay me down to sleep prayer. He began to pray for his life. Come on, somebody. When he began to pray for his life, God began to hear him. Hallelujah. He'll hear you. He'll hear you tonight. All you got to do is call out to him. All you got to do is pray to the God of the heavens. He said what he did. said God called the prophet before he made it out of the court. He said, hold on now. I said, he said, because I've heard the prayer. Listen to that. He said, you go back and you tell us the cow that I heard his prayer. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm here, to, I'm here tonight to tell some of y'all God's hearing you. God hears, God hears some of y'all. God is hearing your prayers tonight. All you got to do is begin to call out to him. Turn your face to the wall. And begin to cry out to him. And when he made it back to him, he said, you tell him. Because I've heard his prayer. I've added unto his life 15 years. Hallelujah. Don't y'all think, look, prayer changes things. Hallelujah. What does prayer do? Get us in the will of God. And when we get in the will of God, God will begin to do things for you. Hallelujah. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. But I believe we're coming into a year. I told the church, I said, we're coming into a year of praying and fasting. We need to get back to praying and fasting. I'm talking about the church folk. Hallelujah. I ain't talking about fasting because you want to lose weight. I'm talking about fasting because you want to get a word from God. Hallelujah. Appreciate and love y'all. Hallelujah. Y'all just remember me and my family when y'all pray. All right. Praise the Lord. I'd like to ask you if you want to step in your feet tonight. Hey, Amen. We fix you to receive Brother Bull. So glad to have Sister Jennifer, Brother Jason, and their family down. Hey, Amen. They're waiting on them. Thank God my Brother Bull's coming. He'll get them around. Put your heads together. And let's stay welcome tonight. Oh, come on, my God. Hey, Amen. You got some praise tonight. And Brother Bull comes for that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it's just Jesus. Church, it's just Jesus. How many know it's just Jesus tonight? Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, that other night I just, you know, when we begin to exalt and praise the Lord, it just keeps on coming on. Praise the Lord. That praise is just perpetual. It's like something gets a moving. Hallelujah. Something gets a shaking and getting a moving. And the praise that what man begins to generate, praise the Lord. It wasn't well, well, just a little bit of praise. It begins to grow. And as it grows, it feeds praise. And then when it grows, it just gets out of hand, praise the Lord. Ain't you so glad? How many of those is time to let our praise get out of hand? Just let it go and, and let it do what it come to do, praise the Lord, to lift Jesus up. I thank the Lord tonight for being real. I thank Him for His. My Lord, my Lord, I thank you for this. Now he's been speaking to us since we've been gathered here in this camp meeting. I thank God that every night, every word that's spoken has been guided by the Holy Ghost. And you know what? Whenever we can hear the word of God, we can get somewhere. Praise the Lord. When we can hear God's instructions. Pray one thing about it. He ain't going to tell us to go somewhere. We ought not go and do something. We all not do. Praise the Lord. I want to know what God's instructions is to me. What about you? Praise the Lord. He's so good. He's so good. Jan said I'm broke. She's not able tonight. She's not able tonight. I guess we'll wait till tomorrow night and yeah. sing a little song and bring up bring our pastor home. Praise the Lord. Come on, Sister Shell. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so good. He is so, so good. And I'm so thankful tonight. Praise the Lord. I, you know, I ought to be tired, but I ain't. I'll be refreshed in Jesus. I feel refreshed in the Holy Ghost. I feel like God is really, 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 really putting something down in our bones. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You've been singing this little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. 
let the Lord do what he wants to do in us tonight. And speak to us. Speak to us. Praise God. You know, I, I don't think people's minds are fully, fully grasped yet. I believe we're coming to that. That when God speaks to a minister, it's, it's anointed and from God. It's God speaking to us. Right then and right there. Amen. It's God talking to us. And we think in our mind, oh, Jesus, come down in his robe and start talking to us. I'd rather listen. But let me tell you, it's the same Jesus. His anointing and His Word the same Jesus. Praise God. has stood here this week and talked to us. How many can say that? He's talked to us all during this chapter. So open your heart. Open your mind. Open your ears tonight. Just lift your hand and say, Lord, open my ears. Clean out my spiritual ears. Give me ears to hear and eyes to see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Help us sing a little bit of this song. Yes, me again, Lord. I pray.
than anything we ever saw or heard or read about. How many believes that? Thank you, Jesus. I said, how many, how many believes that tonight? We're so glad to hear. We say, brother and sister, River's been with us tonight. Like I say, or him, he's no stranger. And if the offered buckets is passed, make sure you help him. They've come a long ways to be with us. And like I say, again, he's no stranger here. Make him welcome tonight. My brother and my friend, our yoke fellow in the gospel, Brother Connor Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. Don't you appreciate it tonight? Oh, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. It's so good to be home to see everyone. We've been watching some of the services online. Enjoying it. We're glad we can be here tonight. Didn't know at one time we'd get to make it, but God is gracious and God is good. So thankful for what He's speaking to us. You know, the Apostle Paul said to the Ephesians, right back to them, he had a great move in Ephesus. Stayed there for about three years and preached the gospel in a place that was totally given to idolatry. But the gospel is successful anywhere. Me and Brother Eddie was talking a little bit right before service. Well, the gospel is not the gender question. The gospel come to give an answer. And so many people get into arguments over things, questions that gender strive. But the gospel was never given to give man a question. Man's got enough questions. God gave the answer. One answer. Hallelujah. No discrimination. You know, when you look at the cross, there's no discrimination. That's why it was revealed to Peter, God is no respected person. But in every nation, he that feareth God and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Paul was writing to the Ephesians and he said he, Paul had two prayers in Ephesians chapter 1 and chapter 3 and he said that my prayer is that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of nothing but good. the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you might know what is the hope of His call yeah. and what the inheritance is in the saints. Right. And that you might know the exceeding greatness of His power that worketh mightily in them that believe. Thank you. And that you might know what God wrought in Christ, what He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead. It wasn't just like Elijah raising someone from the dead or Elijah. But He raised Him from the dead of our sins and death. Are you listening to me? What He worked in Christ. What work of God was worked in Christ. When He raised Him from the dead. Set Him at His own right hand. Which is far above all principality, powers, and dominion. Anything that you can name. Hallelujah. He is above. Made Him to be the head of the body, which is the church, which is the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. Do you know that everything that Jesus comes to do, hallelujah, will see the fullness in His church. The fullness of Him that filleth all in all. I mean, it's glad tonight. Thank God. For the revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I certify you, brethren, in the book of Galatians, the gospel that I preach, hallelujah, was not of man or by man, but it was by revelation. Oh, somebody say revelation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It was by revelation. He said, when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, that He might reveal His Son in me. I've been telling the people to church 
I said you need to let this be your prayer. God, you separated me from my mother's womb for one purpose, to reveal your son in me. Because if you know the son, you know the father. He is the full revelation of God to man. I said he is the only full revelation that God to man. Not only is God for man, but God to live in man. Would you give God a hand to praise God? Because if the Son is revealed in you, that's really all you're going to want to focus on. That's going to be your vision. You know, we live in an age of so much division and doctrines of men and uh, religions and a lot of people. But you know, if you go back to Jesus, God never wanted it to be complicated. Paul said in Corinthians, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them to love him. We're not talking about heaven here. He's talking about the carnal man, the natural man, the sinner man, the religious man does not know what God prepared in Christ. He prepared in Him our redemption by His blood, our salvation. He prepared in Him sonship. He prepared in Him the gifts of God. What God has prepared for them that love Him. He said the natural man don't know it, but it is revealed unto us who have the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Everything that God has prepared right now. Right now. You know, when we get over there, we don't have to figure out nothing. <laughs> There's not going to be no mystery. But right now, He has come to reveal what God has prepared. Not prepared, but prepared. Already done in Christ. And I appreciate it. Thank you for what He's doing. How He's moving. His great power. You know, some of the things that God has been showing me the last years. I said, God, it was there all the while. I don't know why I didn't see it. But you know, revelation comes with growth. Comes with dedication. Consecration. And Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. You know, Brother Reed was talking about what God done in the seven and it was so great. But yet still we had some growing to do. But thank God that was good fertilizer. <laughs> that was good ground to grow in. Amen. Ah, Lord, but you know, I, I guess when I first started preaching, I, I thought I was, wasn't even a child no more. Because the anointing, the anointing is not a child. And these last years you just see so much the Lord spoke to me back in 2010, I believe it was, or 09, and He told me, He said, I'm going to take your ministry into a change. I'm going to slow you down. He said, oh, well, what I want to do. And I thought, well, Lord, people are looking for a fiery evangelist and prayer lines and ministering to people. He said, don't worry about that. He said, there's always those coming on to do that. That will never be lacking in the church. He said, but you ask for growth and maturity. He said, but a lot of times you want, you'd rather meet the expectations of the people than to operate in the stage of growth that I grow it. So, and you know, I thought, well, Lord, once people come and they find out I'm doing a lot of teaching, more than evangelistic fireball preaching, they won't come. But God proved me wrong. Because whatever God is ready to do, He'll have people prepared to hear them. Do you believe that tonight? We don't put down anything that God is moving in any way. Whether it's through great rejoicing or shouting or dancing and 
I love to do all that. And sometimes at the church, they think I go too far with them. But yet still, uh, and I'll have to say, these last five or six years since we started the teaching at the church has helped me more than it has the people. Because I depend on this office, this ministerial gift, to teach the Word out of me. Teaching is right there with the apostle and the prophet and the evangelist. And it has shown me how that this gift is so wonderful. You don't even have to study to teach. Even though I do study. But I get up there and it just comes out. I think I'm going to read something and move on. And then you find out four or five weeks on four or five verses. Because that office just brings out the Word of God. But all the offices are important. Yeah. Whatever. You notice most people that print on the cards that want an image or an identity never put on their teacher so and so. They either want to be an apostle or a prophet. And boy, we sure need apostles and prophets. Don't we? I said we sure need it. But somehow or another, teaching the off the ministerial gift of teaching don't just ring a bell. Amen. But the Bible said Jesus went everywhere teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and disease. Oh, don't you love him tonight? Don't you appreciate it? And we're so happy to be here with brother and sister Reed and the church here and everybody that's here. We're so glad to see you tonight. We don't get down as often as we used to. So like God has had us going in some different directions, different states that we had not ministered in. Even in tent revivals, I never myself personally took a tent to Michigan, but the last five or six years we've been privileged uh, the people in our church that has tents and they take them to uh, Michigan and they invite me and Bunny to come preach a week up there when they take it up there. Boy, it's a sure lot easier than me pulling a trailer and driving stakes. All I got to do is just pack up and go up there and preach my week. They usually stay up there a month and I go up there and preach my week and come back home and it sure did take a load off of me. But anyway, I appreciate it. I take my hat off to Brother Reed, all of his workers that still put these tents up. Let's give them to Jesus a great big hand of praise. Hallelujah. If you want to go with me tonight to the book of Romans, chapter 3, something I was reading, I meditate on several different things. Seemed like the Lord would not let me get away from this. I told him the other night when I first got saved, the Romans was a book I wanted to stay away from. <laughs> I was having a hard enough time understanding Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The book of Acts was really exciting, but when I got to the book of Romans, Paul lost me. Because there, he, he, he preaches, he, he writes a letter that gives a revelation of the full plan of God and man from the beginning to the end. He deals with the, with the covenant given at Mount Sinai and the nation Israel. He deals with the, the new covenant and the gospel and the church and he deals with so many things, but it's so wonderful. But when God did begin to open this up to me, probably back in the 80s, I began to study it and go through it and go through it and go through it and go through it. And I told Bonnie yesterday, I said, you know what, every time I go back to it, it's still like pieces of the puzzle that's not been there is there. 
Well, this is what Paul is saying here in Romans. He, 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 Romans 1, he names 23 works of the flesh of man in the first chapter. And he says that the, only the gospel can save. And he said the gospel is not only the revelation of salvation free from sin, he said, but in it is revealed the righteousness of God. Not the righteousness of the law, not the righteousness of man, but the righteousness of God. It was reserved to be revealed in the gospel. And in the second chapter, he tells the Jews that no matter who you are, O man, if you sin, it's the same. Under the law or without the law. And he told him, he said, Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, his long suffering, his forbearance, and long suffering, that's only given to lead you to repentance? God never compromises with sin. Whether it's a sinner, religion, whether it was the children of Israel, God never. He said, But. His, the riches, He's rich in goodness. Yeah. And He is to you, and He is forbearance. You know, forbearance is when something that you don't accept, but you put up with it. Yeah. Because you know that you're going to bring a change. Right. And it's long suffering. He said it leads us to repent. He said, but if after the hardness and impenitent heart, a heart that won't repent. He said, you're not going to get by. He said, you're treasured up to yourself. The wrath of God against the day of judgment. What he said, as you continue in sin, you're making deposits of what your judgment's going to be. Hallelujah. And he goes on and said, God's going to render to every man according to what his life is. How he lived. And then he's coming on down, but he comes on into this third chapter and talking about, he said, uh, what advantage have the Jew? The advantage they had the call, they received the Word of God. But everybody that received it in the Jewish nation, they didn't believe it. He said, what? Is the faith of God or the Word of God or the Word of faith made of none effect? Because some didn't believe. He said, God forbid. You cannot make the things of God without effect. It may not be effective in your life because you don't believe it and abide in it, but anything that's of God, you can't downplay it. It don't fade out. It don't lose its power. It don't lose its authority. He said, what? He said, they had the oracles of God. They had the promises of God. They had the blessings of God. He said, but because some didn't believe, well, we find in the wilderness 40 years some that didn't believe. But yet still, the very children they said that will die in the wilderness, God raised them up. They said if we can't live it, our children sure can't live it. But God worked the miracle and carried them in. They died in the wilderness, but the children they had no hope for, God said I'll take them in and there's the one So now with time we look at our generation and our age and we think, God, if, if I've got to the place and I'm not serving God like I used to, there's no hope for them. But listen, God hey. is God. Come on. The very children, they said, there's no way. We saw the Red Sea divide. We've eaten the man, we, but our children haven't had the experiences we've had. But God took them in. Sometimes I think about our grandchildren, we love them, but they're just not serving God. And you think, God, when I was their age, I've been preaching 10 years. Or I was their age, I've been preaching 15 years. And now here they are, they go, but listen, and, and, and the reason I've said it sometimes, it'll make you think, what hope is there for them? 
Well, the hope is not religion. The hope is not the world. The hope is what's always been the hope. Hallelujah. And that's God. That's Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Listen, you can't rule the gospel out. You may rule out religion. You may rule out this Hollywood style of ministry. How God is proclaiming the name of Jesus. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. But the gospel is still the power of God. Not only to save, but to reveal the righteousness of God from faith to faith. As you grow in faith, righteousness is revealed. More righteousness. As you grow, more righteousness. Not the righteousness of man, but the righteousness of God. He said it's the faith of God, of none effect. Because you don't believe, God's faith is just as effective tonight. As it ever was. Because of all. He said, as it's written, let every man be alive. What's he saying? They may not believe it, but God's not the liar. They are. The faith, the faith is still a faith. Let every man be alive. But God be the truth. If God has spoken, it's the truth. It don't make no difference. How many don't believe it? But those that believe it, that word is going to be effective. Why don't you give God some praise tonight? But he come on down in verse 10 in Romans chapter 3. And he said, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now for a Gentile to pick that letter up and read it, it wouldn't offend him. But for a God-fearing Jew to read that, that was very offensive. Because they thought they were righteous by the law. Do right. you know that God purposely set the bar of the law so high yeah. that a man couldn't keep it? Because if he could have been saved by the law, he would have had something to boast in. Yeah. He gave it as a schoolmaster. And a tutor. If you hire a tutor to tutor your child, once he's learned, guess what? The very one that hired that tutor is going to say, You don't fire him. You just said, We don't need your services. The law was only given to bring us to Christ. And the God that gave the law had to be the one that take it away. Because that covenant was made with Israel. Everybody say Israel. Israel. What was the weakness of that covenant? It was made with the flesh. God can keep it. God can keep the covenant. God won't back up on His Word. God won't back up on His Word. But the weakness was the flesh. A man with a law of sin in him cannot keep a law that's just and holy and righteous because there is a law in him from the fall of man a law of sin the law of righteousness left out of Adam which is the law of the spirit Paul said in Romans chapter 8 there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law, not just righteousness, but the law of righteousness. What is the law of righteousness? It is to do the God right things. It is to do what's right with God and of God. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. It's made me free. 
free from the Mount Sinai law and the, what that law was given against, which was the law of sin. For what the law given at Mount Sinai could not do. Hallelujah. Let's give you a new birth. The law could not give you a new birth. It could not give you a new nature. It could not give you the law of the Spirit that only comes by birth. And you only get that birth by believing that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, died on the cross and rose from the dead. It gives you a new birth and a new law. It is called the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ. As it is written, there is no righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open grave. They open the mouth, death comes out. The corn, the natural, sin. Because there's a law of sin in there. With their tongues, they have used the seed, the poison of snakes is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. The feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their way. And the way of peace have they not known? There is no fear of God before their eyes. What a terrible state of man through Adam's fall. He's quoting from the Old Testament. David spoke about this. Oh, what a state that man fell in. Time he opens his mouth, death comes out of him. Paul is saying all this to make his case that a man in this fallen state, whether he's Jew or Gentile, can't save himself. He's got to have a Savior. He's got to have a Savior. Real quick, I'm going to get my point across. Dealing with the righteousness of the law. The righteousness of God. Let's read a little bit further. Now we know that what things soever the law saith. How many have ever been in court or been to court with someone? And people make all kinds of excuses of why they broke the law. But it does not change the voice of the law. The law is given to reveal what state you're in and what judgment comes with it. It's all right to be quiet. There's nothing going on wrong. Now we know that what things soever the law said, 
It said to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped. It don't make no difference how much your defense lawyer tries to defend you. That law will stop your mouth. The law of the Constitution that you violated will shut your mouth up. If you're guilty, the law can only pronounce guilt. You're guilty. Come on. Paul just described the state of humanity of what I just read. And the law stood at Mount Sinai and said, God, they're guilty. There's a law of sin in man. And I find them guilty. And he read off these things. Galatians 17 named 17 works of the flesh that come from that law of sin. They're called action sin. But they come from the law of sin. They come from the nature of sin. If you don't have a nature sin, you'll have no action sin. Are you listening to Romans 1, names 23, works of action sin. Paul here in Romans 2 is naming all the mouth. It's like an open grave. Death comes out of it. Why? Because God gave the sinners, not the devil, not man, God gave the sinners. The day that you eat that fruit, you shall surely die. God said, you're condemned to death. You're judged to death. God said, this is my law against sin. Sin is death. Romans said in the fifth chapter, through one man's offense. Who was offended? Adam offended God. Eve offended God by disobeying him and eating from that tree. Paul said, through the offense of one man, all were what made, everybody say made, were made sinners. But through the righteousness of one man, Jesus Christ, all were made righteous and made free and made sons of God. Hallelujah. The law in Mount Sinai said, you're guilty, you're guilty, you're guilty. You're guilty. I condemn you to death. But at Mount Calvary, at Mount Calvary, the righteousness of God declared you're free. You're just. I've justified you. I've freed you. You're clear of guilt. Give him a hand to pray.
But we have to practice that righteousness. Paul said in Romans 5, but not as the offense. Everybody say not. If you miss that one word in that scripture, you'll compare the two covenants equal. He said, but not as the offense. It's the free help. The offense one man brought the law of sin. But the free guilt of all the sins and offenses that come, the free guilt puts them down. What's the free guilt? The free gift of righteousness, which is the free gift of the Spirit. God made man righteous. And through God's righteousness, He would reign through Adam. Everything would be sudden. He would have dominion. But when he ate that tree, the righteous of God left out of him. He become unrighteous. But God had a plan. God had a plan. God had a plan. That where sin did abound by the law, pointing it out, grace did much more abound and power it. Hallelujah. And it's glad tonight with this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. So Adam offended God. So what's he saying? Every time we offend God, if we'll get on our knees and ask forgiveness through Jesus dying on the cross. Praise God. God, through Jesus, has already taken that offense away. But it won't work if you don't own us. And not only that, when sickness comes to offend you, the obedience of Jesus is greater than what offends you. Come on. Whatever offense comes against you, not only us offending God, but whatever offends you, God has done set in place. Whatever offends you, hallelujah, God's given you the victory over every offense of sin and sickness and disease and fear and oppression and depression, everything that offends man, God through power has given us power over all offenses. The righteousness of the law says you're all guilty. The righteousness of God says you're justified. You're cleared of all that you were guilty. I don't have time tonight to teach and preach on the practice of righteousness. God makes us righteous, but we have to yield our members as servants. We have to serve this right. And we do, the fruit is holiness, the everlasting life. But if we yield to sin, iniquity unto iniquity, death. So God gives us righteousness. Can I read a little bit of Go ahead. Look at somebody tell me, say, I love the Lord. Therefore, now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, or the righteousness of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. 
in God's sight. For by the law is what? The knowledge of sin. The law of sin. That's sin. That comes from the law of sin. Everything he said and said, God, you sent me for this. Now they're guilty. That all the world You know, it's easy for us to say that we're not guilty of someone else's actions or sin. But we want to be justified in how we see things and how we do things. The only way you can be just, the just one who is God, says you're just. And if the just one says you're just, who is left to condemn? That's why no law of Mount Sinai could condemn you if you perceive the righteousness of God and you're practicing it and you're walking in it. I don't mean that folks to say you can't sin. Do anything you want to. But that's not the plan of God. You will never get nothing else to deliver you but the gospel. Nothing else can declare you just but God. We practice a lot of good Christian works and they're all needful. But that can never declare you just. You always have to look to Jesus. The blood and the blood. Oh, you know what justified means? Somebody of a higher power and a higher order made a decision to forgive you of all you was guilty of and say, I declare you just. Go and live free. Romans 8 said, it's Christ that justifies. Who does that lead to condemn? Romans 8 said, It's kind of rattled me. So I finally decided yesterday, I said, Oh God, I accept this. You out of years ago. Sometime I'm slow catching on. But now, verse 21. But now, everybody say now. Now. <laughs> but now, the righteousness of God, without the law, Righteousness at Mount Sinai is manifest in who? Christian believers. It's now manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. When the law and the prophets look at somebody that's believed on Jesus, that God is justified, the law says, I find no fault. The prophets who prophesied and told people to turn to God, when they see the righteousness of God in a believer, the prophet said, I have nothing to prophesy against the righteousness of God. Who, who could set himself up to speak against the righteousness of God? You're familiar with the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, for God hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? Amen. That we might be made. Who's doing the making here? God. God made Jesus Christ who knew no sin. God made Him to be sin for the whole world. Hallelujah. That we might be made what? The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. God does this. If Adam's offense made all men sinners, then Jesus' obedience by God makes all men righteous. If you believe on it, if you walk after it, if you live after Adam, you're going to manifest the Adam life. But if you live after the one that's made you righteous, thank God, which is God in Christ, Let 
many ever told God, I'm almost there. I almost made it. Somehow or another, I slid back down the ladder two or three steps. Listen, I'm not talking about seeking God. Three weeks ago, in prayer, God revealed to me, He said, You're not ready. What's coming on the world, the people you pass for, not ready. You're not ready. Really disturbed me. But He didn't tell me that. To put myself down to God. But to turn to God. To know that I have full access to Him in prayer through faith in Jesus Christ. There's going to be so many changes in the next three years that will shock our generation like it ain't never been shocked. God told me he's going to shake the technology world. He said he's going to shake the satellite system that man's made a God out of. They depend on that system more than a new God. He said, I'm going to shake everything. I said, what they're doing right now, don't shake me. And don't shake those that have faith in me. Tell the people to humble themselves under God and serve God. For thank God we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken and cannot be moved. But we have received a kingdom through the gospel and the new covenant. Hallelujah. That's shaking everything. The word of God shakes everything. But nothing shakes the word of God. And Peter said, we're born again not to come up the seed of man which is the Word of God that lives and abides forever. This Word of God that you're born of, the Spirit of God lives forever. Let's choose in the world the life of sin and death. Let's choose. Hallelujah. Let's choose Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I told God, I said, well, God won't preach too long. Be cold on that tip, but I miss that. I may not preach too long because it's hot on you. I'm going to appreciate the word of God. I mean, it's glad what was spoken at Calvary. We're very familiar with it. It's preached from our pulpits that Jesus proclaimed these words. It is finished. That has never been finished. Nobody can finish it. He finished our redemption. And how righteous and how eternal life. For the righteousness of God, everybody say, the righteousness of God. Think about what you're saying. Sister Bonnie, God's righteousness has no fault. The law didn't have no fault, but who it was given to was sinful. It had a sinful nature. The law came to magnify every sin, to give a knowledge that this is sin. Have you, I know you've read Deuteronomy 28. How many loves Deuteronomy 28? How many loves all the blessings? And God said, if you do, if you keep all my commandments, all my statutes, all my judgments of what's right or wrong, you'll be blessed. 
But if you don't, you know the rest of the chapter is curses. But do you know in the gospel, there is no curse except you reject Jesus. Because the gospel didn't come to bring a curse. It come to bring a blessing. That blessing is righteousness. And that righteousness is life. We call it the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. The righteous of the law said, you're all guilty. But the righteous of God at Calvary said, you're all justified and made righteous. If you'll believe on Jesus, accept Him as Savior, follow the Lamb, but it's where we go. Deny yourself and take up the cross and follow Him. God has declared you're just and you're righteous. What a gospel. I thought some other things that I might preach. I said, God, there's so much teaching in this. And this is an evangelistic camp meeting. And there's things, God, that I could do. But He wouldn't release me from this word. Right? I have no apology for the word of God. Yeah. So, Brother Rivers, in a nutshell, in essence, what do you say this means to us? Oh, if you could see it was more than a man dying on the cross. Yeah. It was an exchange of the victor of the victim. Man no longer been a victim. And he become the victim of us. And when you can see this, you won't be praying to be righteous. You won't be fasting to be righteous. You won't be giving tithes and offerings to be righteous. You won't be going to church to be righteous. You will know that the only way you could be made righteous. Now these things are good practices. They're in the Bible. God teaches them. But never think that that is righteousness. God. God's the one that gave the sentence over Adam and his seed. God's the one that gave the sentence over Jesus and his seed. Under Adam, we declared guilty. And then Mount Sinai come along and strengthened the sentence God had put on man by 613 laws. James said, if you offended in one part, you was guilty of all. But in the gospel, you don't offend in one point guilty of all. Because Jesus took away our offense. I used to preach, if you fall, you go right back to ground zero. One day God told me, He said, quit preaching that. He said, people that fail, make mistakes, or sin, don't go back to ground zero. He said, but they go back down on their knees and look to Jesus, the justifier. Look to God, the righteousness. Look to God. If you don't go back to sign ground zero, thank God you pick up and walk in the Spirit. Why right where you left off? Right? Walking in the Spirit is walking in faith. Walking in faith is walking in Jesus and who He is and what God has done in Him. If I come right here, and I do it all the time at the church, or somewhere near me, if I don't acknowledge Him, that this is not my altar. The cross is my altar. Because of the cross, see, under the law, you had to bring a lamb to give a blessing. But under the gospel, you bring nothing. For God said, Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb. You come to the cross with nothing. Yeah. Pastor Sprinkle, but leave with everything. Yeah. Forgiveness of sin, yeah. sonship. Yes. I come here, but don't come here without acknowledging. Father, you gave your son. Yeah. I could never bring nothing. 
Sometimes we scream and cry and God don't hear us because we don't acknowledge Jesus, our righteous. We try to beg God to become righteous, to be pitiful enough, hurt enough, and broke enough. You've got to come to God. There's not but one righteousness. There's three righteousness. Law righteousness given at Mount Sinai. Self-righteousness, which is filthy, right? And God's righteousness, which comes through Jesus Christ. Dying on the cross, you've got to acknowledge. I have no right to bow my knees to you. I have no right to pray before you. Except I behold the Lord Jesus Christ. Except I, hallelujah, I have no way to pray my way to a greater righteousness. There's no greater righteousness. But God has given us. Well, I've changed my prayer. Well, I still pray. I still plead. I still agonize with God, but not separate from Jesus. Yes, that's right. Come on. Look at this. But now the righteousness of God. Without the law. Woo. That's why Paul was infuriated when they came to Galatia and said, Jesus, it's not enough for your righteousness. You've got to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. And Paul said, if any other man come preach any other gospel, that there's one way to be justified. One way to be made righteous. One way to be made sanctified. Let him be accursed. But we're an angel from heaven. Hallelujah. Paul said, thank God, it's not Jesus plus the law. It's not Jesus plus religion. It's Jesus everything. I said it's Jesus everything. Glory. I said it's Jesus everything. Not Jesus plus nothing. But Jesus everything. Righteousness of God without the law manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God. How is it? Which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all men. How many men? All men. Going to the gospel world, preaching the gospel, the new covenant to every creature. Because of the cross, there's no discrimination. All men, God wants them to be righteous. The Jews just couldn't understand how for 1,760 years they had to keep a rigid law. And now a man named Paul could come and preach Jesus Christ and what they had strived for and never attained through 1,760 years. You attain it by faith. Because God never gave the law to make men righteous, but to show them they were not righteous and they couldn't be righteous by keeping the law. It was just given. We were shut up in faith. The faith. We were shut up until faith come. Once it comes. Look what happens when you try it some other way. Besides God's righteousness. Look what happened. I really thought I'd get into preaching this, but he with the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ, unto all upon all of them that believe, for there is no difference. For all Jew and Gentile, all over the world have sinned by the law and the nature of sin and come short of the glory of God. That means man comes short of what God intended to be and that was righteous sons of God. God's glory is who He is and what He can do. Psalm says, the heaven 
It declares who God is and what he can do. By just speaking the words, he created the heavens. So now when I see the word glory, not every time, but most of the time when it talks about glory, I say, God, your glory. Well, I paraphrase and say, God, who you are and what you can do. You know all the glory of God or who God is and what God can do is seen, identified in the face of Jesus. Who's glad to do Whoever we'll put this tent up, whoever they are, there's a glory out here. It shows who they are and what they can do. They can put this tent up the right way. Now somebody that ain't never put a tent up, don't know anything about them, you wouldn't be seeing this beautiful tent. Because they don't have no glory in putting up a tent. A carpenter does not care about you bragging on his work. Because the more you brag on his work, the more glory you give him. The more you're saying, you're a good carpenter yeah. and your work is good. Yeah. Right. God's glory is not shining lights or sounding trumpets. That can be. God's glory is recognizing who he is yeah. and what he can do. Oh. And who he is in you what he can do in you. I know someone's got to go to work. But I have just, just a few minutes here. Get, get, just, just a few minutes. I appreciate your kindness. I know we live in an age it seems like people won't stay with us as long as they used to. Sometimes people say, man, well, I'm going to go around used to preach three hours. Don't put that glory on me. Folks won't come here to preach. Well, God doesn't say, come here a man who can preach three hours. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't the kind of glory people are looking for. Yeah. Come see a man that can preach 45 minutes and let you go home. Yeah. People like that kind of glory. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Come on. Come on. Well, look, there's something right here. For all have sinned. All mankind needs a sin. And come short. Everybody say come short. Come short. Let me read this. What a man of God. Brother Eddie. That these men are fixing a name for you. Well, but they come short. God does not want you to focus on your shortcomings because he's given a better life than Jesus. All have sinned and come short. What does it do when you come short? It brings in condemnation. It makes you feel like a failure. It makes you get to the, if you come short enough, it makes you feel like this good. Paul is bringing out Every man and woman that God ever used, or God spoke to, or gave his miracles to, come short. For all have sinned and come short of what God intended us to do. God don't give up as easy as we do. God really encouraged me. About a week ago, praying. There's a lot of people drifting away from God, got away from God. Some just walking in broken fellowship, some walking in sin. But I felt an encouragement that there's many that God hasn't given up on. So hear His voice. Hear His voice right now. Hear His call. Oh, I feel the hope. It's God that does the call. Some people that's choosing to serve God the way they want to. You can't serve God 
and the righteousness of religion and man's wisdom and the righteousness of God at the same time. There is a freedom in the righteousness of God because you're never trying to become righteous. You just want to hunger and thirst after the righteousness that you've been made. No. You hunger and thirst. Why? Because hunger and thirst feeds Hunger and thirst, Brother Reed, is what causes life and growth. So God made us righteous. We hunger and thirst not to receive this righteousness, but to feed on it, to walk in it, to praise God. Seek first what? The kingdom, the rule and reign of God. What does God rule and reign in? Righteousness. Seek first the rule and reign of God and what? His righteousness. Not man's righteousness. Not our righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Seek God's rule and reign that He's given through Jesus. And the righteousness that that rules and reigns through that He made. Seek that. And you won't have to seek after the world, the things of the world, the things of the car. Some of this might be strange to you here. I, I know you've got great ministers. I'm not trying to be that. Way. But I have sought for years God revealed your righteousness. I know about law righteousness. I know about self-righteousness. God, you said in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed as you grow in faith, from faith to faith. As you grow, His righteousness will be revealed. It has so much power. For all have sinned. How many have ever heard the word of sin to sin this far? That does feel passive, but really, if you come short, you miss the mark. If you come short, you miss the mark. Paul is saying, all men through Adam, whether they had the law of God or not, come short. They miss the mark. But at Calvary, Jesus didn't miss the mark. If he had missed the mark, he couldn't have died for the sins of the world. Abraham, come short. In line about Sarah and going into Hagar, he come short. I'm not trusting the promise but made through Sarah. But he was still the mighty man of God. Are oh, you with me tonight? I'm not putting Abraham down. He comes short. Moses comes short. In killing the Egyptian, that was not God's will. And smiting the rock. Moses comes short. None of these men could be the pattern of our righteousness. They could just be the pattern of faith. That righteousness is by faith. Do you know that when Abraham lied about Sarah, God didn't say that your faith is now no more your righteousness. When he went into Hagar, he didn't say your faith is no more your righteousness. Why? Because he saw Jesus coming. Abraham comes short. Moses came short. Elijah comes short. Uh, going to a cave to die and self bury himself. By running from Jezebel, he comes short after he just seen the fire fall in a nation. But he comes short. Why? He was a man. God didn't reject him because Moses and Elijah appeared to the one that didn't come short. 
on the Mount of Transfiguration, it wasn't about Moses, it wasn't about Elijah. It was about what you're going to accomplish through your death at Jerusalem. You're going to do something that you never know. God's going to do something through you that ain't never been done. I love him tonight. I appreciate it. David comes short with Bathsheba. He comes short in number and if. Because God wanted David to know my kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. You can't number the Spirit of God. You can count Israel, but Israel is not my kingdom. They're just the people that it's been given to. David, don't you think that my kingdom is based on how many people live in Israel? He missed the mark. On and on and on. Peter missed the mark. Not only in denying the Lord, he missed the mark. When he broke fellowship with Gentiles. Because he was afraid he'd get told them back at Jerusalem. And the backlash he would get from eating with Gentiles. God didn't quit using Peter. Paul just said, Peter, this is not the way it is. Righteousness is not about what you eat, what you don't eat. Righteousness is by faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. It still showed that Peter had labored in him. Even after he was raised from the dead, he still had labored. And it still affected what a people will think about. If I eat with Gentiles. I prayed for years and years and years after I realized that God had not only called me to evangelize but to pastor. I prayed that God would do something for families and children. I told God when I went back 15 years ago, I said, Lord, I lost a generation here. I, I didn't know how to work with them. I can't keep everybody safe. I said, well, God, show me. The Lord told me, he said, stop working with these children from babies up. Stop working with them. Get them involved. I've done some things that some people don't agree with, but while I'm going to be led by God, but I'm seeing God do something in church. These little children pray. They believe God. But they love it when you let them partake in the service. They don't feel it. Well, I know what God will use me to do when they get through. They don't do it every service. But I'm seeing something happen at the Million Life Church that I prayed for for years. These sometimes these families, the mom and dad, it's like these children want to go to church. And I thank God for them. I'm just saying, every pastor is not the same. Lord, I said, God, this is what I've been praying for. God, whatever religion is in me, good religion or bad, get it out. If it ain't Jesus, get it out. Sometimes that's a hard pill to swallow. God has spoke to me to preach this Sunday night, watch me tonight. I usually don't tell people what I'm going to preach. For a long time, I don't know what I'm going to preach. But the Lord has told me to preach. On his harvest time. Soul living. Going out. The world needs Jesus. Not a religious Jesus. Not a Jesus with filters on it. But a Jesus. That died. For the whole world. We get people involved. They're doing things. They're going out. I know you have it down here. Street meetings, prisons, and jail. It's harvest time, church. Jesus is coming soon. I was glad tonight. This used to bother me, Pastor Sprinkle. I used to didn't have a problem with the scripture, but I had a problem with me. when John said, "He that's righteous is righteous, even as he is right." That bothered me. But I said, God, I ain't righteous as you. I'm not righteous as Jesus Christ. But so I was looking at my righteousness. But when God gave it, you could listen. The only way you can be righteous and He's righteous is because He that's righteous 
made you righteous and gave you his righteousness. So now I don't have no problem. I said, thank you, God. It almost made me that you would call me righteous to walk in the light, even as you're the light, to have no fellowship with the works of God. How many love Jesus? Yes. Yeah. 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 There's not a person in here, great or child of God, somewhere you can say, God, I come so short. Paul is saying, God has made a covenant through the blood of Jesus. God made the covenant with the seed pastor. So God made a covenant with Israel, the flesh. They couldn't keep it. But the new covenant, God made it with his son. The father can't break it and the son can't break it. Mount Sinai was made with Israel. They broke it. The new covenant in Jesus' blood, the Father has made a covenant. Son, everybody that believes on you is the Lamb of God, confess and repent of their sin. They believe into this covenant between me and you, a covenant of life and righteousness and peace and joy that the devil can't take away. Ain't that wonderful? I'm just glad that God made the this is a, because if God had made the covenant, Brother Dwight with Coleman and Dwight, guess what? Somewhere down the line, Coleman or Dwight woman, whoever had been first, would have come up short. And the covenant would have been right back like it was at Mount Sinai. But he made it with his son. And now we believe into it. <laughs> the covenant is never broken. Between God, we get out of faith. You don't touch the covenant. You just quit living after the covenant and agreement with the covenant. How many glad for a covenant that can't be broken? Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. If this was based, listen, the Bible said I'm going to come to a close. You've been real patient. And I appreciate it. The Bible speaks. Do I feel the Lord? The Bible says sin reigns under death. But listen to this. Listen to this, church. But grace reigns through righteousness under eternal life through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if it was my righteousness and your righteousness, as soon as I would fail, grace would quit reigning. And I would have no right to come to God and be free. But because it's based on God's righteousness, grace reigns through God's righteousness. So when you fail, grace is still reigning. All you got to do is fall on your knees and say, God, I failed you. But grace reigns through your righteousness. Not law righteousness. Not man righteousness. And that grace reigns unto eternal life. If sin can reign to death, why? That grace cannot reign through righteousness. Not man's righteousness, but God's righteousness. Because if it didn't, when you sin, you would have no grace. But because grace reigns through a righteousness that never fails. God says, just walk in. Believe. Receive it. Sometimes we think God's made this thing so hard. That's why it's hard for people to pray. That's why it's hard for people to seek God. Because they're looking at the hardness. It is a sacrifice. But when you can see that this is not earning God, I'm just protecting. When I look back here about 15 minutes ago, the Holy Ghost and me connected. 
and the Holy Ghost is in you. Man, your generation needs you. Your generation needs you. The gifts and the call and the anointing. All this other stuff is going to fade away. But this righteousness, if you just begin to say, teach me how to give myself to your righteousness. I know this might sound stunning, what I'm preaching tonight. Huh? What I'm preaching tonight has found real stunning to me through the year. And I prayed, wept, and cried. God, somehow, let me be able to give to your people. Are you just giving me this because I need it? But as a minister, do your people need it? How many have been taught the Holy Ghost won't dwell in unclean temple? I want to ask you something. Why did Romans 8 say that through the Spirit we mortify the deeds of the flesh? If the Holy Ghost leaves, who, how are you going to mortify the deeds of your flesh? The Holy Ghost don't fellowship sin. But if the Holy Ghost leaves when you sin, where are you going to get the power to mortify your sin and your deeds? It don't leave. Come on. But it just don't fellowship. But the minute you acknowledge the Holy Ghost is the sanctifying, separating power of God living in you. And it gives you power to mortify the deeds of your flesh. If you don't believe this, I heard this all my life. Uh-oh. I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Ghost don't go and come. It just don't fellowship you. But you will show you mercy. But if you don't have the power in yourself to mortify your deeds, go somewhere you'll come up short. And when you come up short, condemnation. I and mean, what you say, man, I've tried this thing for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. I just ain't getting it. I always come up short. Paul said there is a covenant of no come up short here. You may come up short, but not in the covenant. Look to God. Hallelujah. That God, you made me to be a son of God. You saved me to be a son of God. Hallelujah. You saved me to be a son of righteousness. You made me righteous to live righteous. You know what it makes you want to do? Just love Him more. I'll tell you, I don't pray. I don't fast. I seek God. I teach the people. Sometimes I think I'm over pushing. I've got some new ones just come here. Never fast a day in their life. I call for a three day fast and three day prayer revival. Someone said, man, this fast ain't consistent. <laughs> and some of those young converts made it. Some. They didn't feel like it, but they made it. But I encourage you, you need to know how to make sacrifice. Not to be made righteous, but to empty yourself out and be hungry for God. We called another three-day revival. I said, I'm going to leave the fast up to you. I can feel the side of relief. I can come every night and pray. But just as long as there ain't no fast in it. Because I believe in sin. I was telling her something the other day. I said, after two hours, I was praying, I got a breakthrough. And in the third hour, God's word began to come to me. One sister said, There's no way in the world I could fathom that I could ever pray for me out. There's no way. Because a lot of people, like Mother Reese said, didn't come up. We come up in a generation that God was pouring out. Prayer and fasting was as much as revival. God, do I want to see that come back? Yes. But without it, people stay a while, they'll come up short, then they'll walk off and leave. I'd love to see that come back. I've had young men that say, Brother Rivers, you talk about, y'all prayed all night. I said, I can't even imagine going to a church praying all night. I can't imagine getting a jug of water, shut up in a room by myself and not coming out. I'd go crazy. 
I said, it was God. Yeah. It wasn't because we was tough. It was God. But in all that, righteousness didn't come through that. Righteousness came through Jesus Christ. But by that righteousness, we have the power. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's a change upon your heart and life and the shift. Many things, like for a lot of us, stood in the way of him. I see the Lord moving for you. Hallelujah. You enter into the newness that God has upon the earth to reach out and believe Him. Thank you, Lord. There's three things you've been dealing with that really had you concerned. Seemed like the answer won't come. But God said, just trust Him. He's in control. That what He's done in your life is bigger than all this. The righteousness that He's made you and given you to give you His justification and His peace and His power. Hallelujah! I see like you're stepping out in the newness of God's anointing. Oh, glory! Glory! I see God using you to reach people. Your life speaking out to people. Glory! A word like tonight will take the limits off and say, God, I know it's not my righteousness, it's your righteousness. And I want to reveal your righteousness because in your righteousness is the gift of life. In your righteousness is the deliverance of the gospel. Hallelujah. You've been struggling with an affliction in your body. Sometimes it's really heavy upon you. Sometimes it lightens up. But Jesus Christ, by His name, and by His stripes, heals you right now. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Come on and praise Him. Come on and praise Him. Come on and praise Him. Come on and pray. Come on and pray. Had not the Lord said, had not the Lord said that I've called and I've chosen four men predestined in Christ for your life in the ministry. No, my son, this is the time of the coming forth. I shall bring the path that I've planned and many for this hour to come forth. For well, many feel like they're standing in the shadow and can't come forth to the front line. Oh, but my son, I've called you to stand on the front line of the battlefield. For the great name of Jesus, for His Word and His truth. Be encouraged while well, the fields are white. And I'm sending forth laborers. Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Pray to the Lord of the harvest, which is God the Father. And He would send forth laborers. Send forth somebody that can meet the needs of the people. Like I'm walking on the earth and doing it. In Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for some boldness, not of your own strength or who you are, but of some boldness of who I am in you. What I've made you, 
called you for. And I see you stepping out in more newness of life. Higher dimensions of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see God using you to reach people that can't be reached from the pulpit. They can be ministered to from the pulpit, but can't be reached, but be reached on a one-on-one. -on -one. Of the life of God that comes forth from you. Be encouraged. He said, I've made all things new. God in Jesus has made all things new. Lift your hands. Praise Him tonight. 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 This is the day of the going forward. There are many things that we try to put in perspective. God, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? How do I work this out? How do I tell this person? How is it going to come across to them? But God said, don't look to that. Just look to His calling. Walk after Him. All these things that you think about in the term of your heart. What you do about your life that's before you in the ministry. That God Grace is there for every step that you take. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. For white are the fields, my son. Great is the cry of the world that's coming up for a Savior. Great destructions upon the land. The only thing that can answer this generation is the gospel of the kingdom. The truth of the gospel through Jesus Christ. Be encouraged while well, I see the open get wider and the burden of the ministry getting heavier. Even personal thing, I see God handle it. Just let you tr just trust Him. And he can handle what you can't handle. Come on and let's reach to the Lord. Come on and let's reach to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, lift your hand and say, God, I want to reach. Let us reach the unreachable. Let us reach the unreachable. Well, Lord, I saw some of your services online, Loosedale, what God was doing. I heard the Lord as I was walking across here and said, that was a tip of the iceberg for soul. You've been tired. You said, God, I've prayed, I've sought you, I've given myself why they won't come. But God said, You're going to behold his glory, who he is and what he can do, how he can convict men and draw them to all walks of life. Because the end is near. <laughs> oh, in the Bicentennial, in the name of Jesus, glory. 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 I see you getting out there with your guitar. In church and under the tent. Just singing this harvest time. And I see our anointing begin to go forth from you. And people being convicted. Oh yeah. People riding down the road. Turn around and come back. Oh, they're right for Jesus. They're right for His truth. Come on in praise. Oh, give God a hand to praise. Glory! Glory! Isaiah said, God said, who shall we send? Who will go for us? Isaiah said, here am I. Here am I. Send me. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. 
all people standing that there's somebody that say a little course of that song there might be other people want prayer come to pray for you somebody say a little course of that song it's harvest time it's harvest time the world needs the righteousness of God how many can realize tonight thank God how much power is in the righteousness of God oh come on and preach today Anybody need prayer? Thank you, Lord. Won't pray. Won't pray. God will ask you. Brother Reed, God, we appreciate you. Love Brother Reed so much. His sacrifice. The souls of God's kingdom. The church. Standing in the gift, making intercession. You'll never know how much I appreciate it. Think about it. Hallelujah. The great gifts that God has placed in his life. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Brother Reed. Thank you, Lord. We love you tonight. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate you. Hallelujah. I feel his presence. Feel his power. Feel his anointing. In the name of Jesus.
I believe it's harvest time, don't you? 